Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a thermostat using a multimeter. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. If you find this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get straight into it. One thing to make a note out of is if you're using a digital thermostat, you're going to want to make sure that your batteries are good because your thermostat might just need a new pair of batteries and your troubleshooting is done from here. Before we begin troubleshooting, I just want to explain what we actually have here. So, of course, this is our thermostat and this is our multimeter that we're going to be using to check AC voltage. And right here, I just want to make it clear, this is going to represent our control board and this is going to be located inside of your furnace or air handler section. This is actually the insides of an old thermostat, but we're going to use this as reference as a control board. The only thing that's really important to take note in here is which terminals are these wires actually going to. I will not assume any type of knowledge that you have and we're going to start this from scratch. So we're going to open up this faceplate for this thermostat. Doesn't matter which thermostat you have, they all can just be like popped open. You might have like a little blatch or a button, but here it is. Here is the face of our thermostat. This is what the back side looks like and we're just going to leave this outside of the equation and focus on our plate here. This is going to be backed up against your wall. As you can see, we have some colored wires here. They're usually typically color coded, but you can't always trust them. You never know who really installed this. But typically, your R goes to your red wire, which is your power. Here, we actually have like a little jumper between RC and RH. You're going to notice all the thermostats have that. We have a yellow wire that goes to Y, and this is our cooling. We have a white wire that goes to W. This is going to be our heating. We have a green wire that goes to G, and that is going to be our fan. And we have a blue wire that goes to C, which stands for common. And it's actually okay if you don't have a common. Not every thermostat has that. And I'll show you how to troubleshoot this if you have a common or not. To clear a few things up, we have a B terminal and we have an O terminal. Sometimes you'll see it in one terminal where it says O slash B. And this is used for heat pump systems where you have a reversing valve. If the O option is selected, then the reversing valve defaults to heating mode. If the B option is selected, the reversing valve defaults to cooling mode. And this video will not apply to you if you have a heat pump system, as we don't have these terminals wired. If you want to learn how to troubleshoot a heat pump system, that will be done in a separate video. Here is a representation of our control board, but the only thing that's important to notice here is to where these wires go and the name of their terminals. So it's straightforward. So your C terminal, which is your blue wire, goes to the C terminal on the thermostat. Your R terminal on the control board, which is your red wire, goes to the R wire and R terminal on your thermostat and so forth. C to C, R to R, W to W, Y to Y, and G to G. Today, we're gonna to be performing all of our troubleshooting at our control board. Let's say we take off our covers for our air handler system, a furnace, and you have a door switch, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that switch is pressed down and closed so it assumes that this, the cover is on. If not, nothing's gonna work here. We're gonna begin by turning our meter to volts and we're gonna want this in the volts AC setting. So make sure you're reading AC, which stands for alternating current. So we are now at our control board. Assuming your door switch is closed and all the power is on and your thermostat is in the off position. What we want to do is first confirm that we have 24 volts. Any reading from 24 to 28 volts confirms that you have voltage. So we're going to put one lead on R and one lead on C. Between these two, we should be reading 24 to 28 volts. If you have that, then your transformer is providing power and we can continue. If you don't have a C wire wired, then you can put one lead on R and then put the other lead on any of your other terminals such as W, Y, or G. And be between that, you should also be getting that same reading, 24 to 28 volts. If we can confirm that we have that voltage, that means our transformer is giving us secondary power and we can continue to troubleshoot. 
If you do not have any 24 volts, then you can stop troubleshooting your thermostat and you're gonna troubleshoot your transformer and look into why that is not giving you power. Let's begin by troubleshooting our fan. Right now you can see our fan is in the auto position and our system is on off. This form of troubleshooting doesn't matter if you have a common or not. We're gonna be taking our power from R. So let's, let's begin. So we're gonna put one lead on R and we're gonna put the next lead on G. Between these two, you should be reading 24 volts because you are not calling for the fan. Your system is off. Now we can turn our thermostat fan in the on position. To confirm that the thermostat did its job, we're gonna put one lead on R and the next lead on G. Before we had a 24 volt reading when the switch was off. Now we should be getting a zero voltage reading. If between R and G, you have zero volts when you turn your fan on on, then your thermostat did the job and the circuit closed. That means the thermostat is working. If you didn't get a voltage drop of zero and you still have your 24 volts, then your thermostat is not operating. From here, we can continue troubleshooting. We're gonna switch our fan to the auto position. And from here, we're gonna test either our cooling or heating. Let's begin with heating. And we switch that to heat. We can see that our room temperature is 72 degrees. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that our setting is higher than the room temperature. Here, our heating setting is 79 degrees. So in that sense, this should engage and we might hear a clicking sound. As you can see, the heat symbol is actually blinking. When you either switch to cooling or heating and you see any, any type of blinking, that means that there is a delay. You wanna wait for that to stop blinking for your thermostat to actually engage. A time delay can be anywhere from one to five minutes. Once you gave it the proper amount of time, we can begin to check. So with the system off, remember, between R and W, you should be getting 24 volts. Once you waited that five minutes, your circuit should close. So between R and W, when you actually call for heat, you should get zero volts. If you have zero volts, that means that your thermostat is operating. If you still had your 24 volts and you never had your voltage drop, that means your thermostat is bad. If between R and W, you get zero volts, that means your thermostat did its job and it's operating. Those voltage readings will confirm if your heat relay on your thermostat is operating or not. But remember, we put the fan on auto. So if your heat kicked in and you had zero voltage between R and W, that means your heat relay is good. Next, you wanna check if your, your fan actually works on auto when your auto relay for your fan is operating. Between R and G, you should also have zero volts. If you do, that means that your auto feature for your fan is operating. If you have, once again, 24 volts between R and G when you're in the auto setting, that means your auto relay is bad and your thermostat is not operating. Now let's test the system on cooling. So once again, we're gonna keep our fan on auto because if we have it on on, then it's always gonna run and you really don't want that. So we're gonna put our system on cooling and we're gonna wanna drop the temperature. So right here, we have it set to 60 and our room temperature is 72. Right there, we heard a click. That means our thermostat switched over. So let's check to see if our system works. We are now back at our control board in the air handler. So when the system was not calling for cooling between R and Y, you should have 24 volts. Since we switched it over to cooling between R and Y, we should be getting zero volts. If it stays at 24 volts, that means the cooling relay is bad and the thermostat must be replaced. If between R and Y, we got zero volts. That means the thermostat did its job and it's good. Once again, you wanna to wanna to make sure that your fan works in the auto feature. Whether you call for cooling or heating, your fan will also be energized when you call for either one of those. So between R and G, you should be reading zero volts. And that means your 
thermostat is good. This is how you properly check a thermostat using a multimeter and checking for voltage. One thing I didn't show, which I do as part of my troubleshooting, is once I confirm my voltages, I actually bypass the thermostat or I jump it out. That will be in a separate video, but this is how you properly check a thermostat for heating and cooling for your fan on on or auto using a multimeter and AC voltage. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I post new videos every week, and I'll catch you all next time. Thank you.